What's up guys? Welcome back. So here we have a nice 22 cabin chassis with blown up motor. I'm gonna start this thing up, let you hear for yourself what you think. And I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna do about it. It's gonna be pretty cool. So hold on just a sec. I don't know boss, I don't think nothing wrong with this one man. It's just making a little bit of noise. I think we can make it go for another 100,000 miles or so, huh? I don't know, what do you think guys? You think we should take this thing out and figure out what's going on with it? Yeah, so after I get the engine out, we're going to do some teardown, find out exactly what failed on it, just, you know, give you guys a little explanation of what's causing that noise. I got a pretty good suspicion that we have some catastrophic damage. I don't know. I'm a rocket scientist, but I don't know. Who knows? Anyway, so here's what we're going to do. This thing right here is a 21 with 85,000 miles on it. It's already gone through a uh, attitude adjustment, so to say. So we kind of got free reign on what we're gonna do with this one. Now, instead of just putting another 22 long block in this thing and uh, then having to do the cam and lifter upgrade, we're gonna go ahead and put an 18 long block in here. And we're gonna put an 18 high output long block in here. This is a cabin chassis, so it did not come with the the high output but let me show you else what else we're gonna put in this thing it's gonna be fun so there is some of the pile of parts let's go down the list we got a Banks cold air intake we got Banks boost tubes and monster ram we have a fleece cheetah of course we have the fast we have the coolant bypass from fleece we have some ARP head studs a Banks map sensor relocate kit some other goodies in that box down there course we're going to put the valvoline oil in here for a break-in but then we're also going to do the insane diesel oil filter bypass system and the bulletproof diesel water pump so i'm going to go ahead and start getting everything ready to pull the motor pull the cab you know all that good stuff i'm going to lift her up get everything disconnected from underneath get the coolant drained out you know get the hvac pulled down start disconnecting all this stuff get the cab off of it and then pull the engine and We'll get the long block out here and start dressing her up, get her ready for the prom, all that good stuff. And then uh, if I got some time, I'm going to tear this motor down to the point of failure and find out exactly what failed. Because I know just about every one of you is going to want to know, well, what's causing that knock out of that engine? So we'll see what I can do for you, all right, guys? But hang tight. This is going to be a little bit of a video. So it's going to take me a few days to get all this done. And um, yeah, we'll go through it. Later. Okay guys, here we go. Long block is in. We've got bulletproof diesel water pump. We've got the fleece cheetah. We've got the fleece coolant bypass all ran on that. Now, when you do one of these conversions, there's a couple things that are slightly different between the two blocks. One of them is the timing housing. The timing housing on a 19 is different than the timing housing on an 18. So 19 and newer, you got a different timing housing. So you have to do a couple other things on here. Give you a quick, on the 19 and newer, the power steering bracket is integral with the housing. On 18 and older, you have a separate bracket that you have to buy. You have to get the front one and the back one. We're still waiting for the back one to come in. It'll be here tomorrow. Now, along with that, you've got different crank and cam position sensors because of the housing. So we have to get the 2018 cam and crank position sensors. And because the sensors are different, so are the connectors. So tomorrow I'll be getting the new connector pigtails in. I'll get those wired up and get that part of it done. We've got a couple more things to go on back here. The fast, we're gonna pre-run the fast from the engine back so I don't have to do that when the cab's down and then we're gonna be putting on some termination plugs on the connectors because this thing did have a delete on it but here's where we are so far I did also have to modify this lifting bracket to make room for the connector for the pressure regulator on the rail that's not that big of a deal but you can't just bolt it all back on but here she is with the banks. 
Again, we're waiting for some other stuff to get in. Should be here tomorrow. But that's what we got for now. So some of you guys are gonna ask, why would somebody go through the expense of doing all of this when they could just, you know, bolt in another 22? Well, let me explain this to you. This guy wants to keep this truck around working for a very long time. So we wanna get rid of the, the, the roller hydraulic cam and lifter joke of a setup and go with a flat tap and solid lifter setup. Now, we didn't want to purchase a brand new or remanufactured long block for 21, not 22, but, but for a 21, and then have to immediately do the, the Hamilton cam and lifter swap. So we're gonna cut the labor and the parts from doing that and spend that money on doing the other things that we have to change like the power steering bracketry and the cam and crank position sensors. Now the guy is gonna have a cast iron block and not a CGI block. He's gonna have a solid flat tap at cam and he's gonna have a powerhouse that's way more capable than what was originally in here. Now remember, this is a cabin chassis truck. So with the cabin chassis truck, you get the detuned engine. We're putting a high output from a 3500 D2 pickup truck instead of the DD cabin chassis. So there's the main reasons why we're doing this. So you, with, and for those of you who don't know, the difference between the high output and the low output is gonna be the compression ratio and the injectors. So now he's got way more capability with his modifications that he's done to extract even more power out of this thing. So, we're, we're getting a lot of people making comments about, you know, why you spend $70,000, $80,000, $90,000 on one of these trucks and then have to turn around and spend another thirty grand to, to bulletproof them. And I'm going to say this again so that, you know, some of you who don't read the comments and just like to go ahead and make a, a quick comment to feel like you're putting your, your voice out there and you don't actually watch the videos. We don't want to have to spend 70, 80, 90, 100 thousand dollars on a truck every three years, and that's exactly what they're doing. To these things, they're engineering these things to fail at 100 thousand miles. So we're identifying the weak points, and we're getting rid of those weak points and putting in parts that are dependable, parts that we can count on for three, four, five hundred thousand miles, so that you're spending you know, let's say $70,000 on a truck and then another 30 grand to bulletproof it. You're only doing that once every decade or two or three instead of every three, four or five years. So in the long run, it is definitely a money saver. And we've got to look at it like that. People want to keep their trucks around for a long time. This is the way you go. If you're one of those types of guys who just doesn't have anything better to do with his money than to buy a new truck every couple years then don't do your modifications that's fine but for the rest of us that just don't have a the money tree in the backyard this is what we got to do again yes it's expensive but it's way worth it especially in the long run now let's take a look at if you do decide to sell your truck and you don't want to trade it in because you've done all this work the dealership isn't going to give a crap about the amount of money that you put into it you sell it privately because when somebody sees that you've gone through the expense of doing all of this work, they know the value in it. And it's gonna hold a higher resale value than what you actually put into it. So keep that in mind as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this one stitched together and get it ready for upload so that you guys can see what we're doing here. And then I'll do another video after we get it down. Now, as far as, you know, I, I wanted to tear down the other engine so that we could find out what the point of failure was. But unfortunately, the way that the core process works at the dealerships, as soon as we get the replacement engine here, they want the core back as soon as possible so they can get credit back for that core. They don't want to just sit there on the money. So sadly, that engine's already gone. But I'm pretty sure we had a connecting rod failure on it, the bearing failure. We had a bunch of metal in the pan when I drained the oil, it was just pretty nasty. So I'm not gonna be able to give you a video on exactly what failed on that engine. You know, that was that would have been a, 
exploratory on my half. You know, nobody's gonna pay me to do that, but it doesn't really matter. Engine needed to be replaced, so that's what we got. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get these all stitched together and get it uploaded and let you guys uh, enjoy this video. Thanks for watching and you know, like, comment, share, and all that good stuff. And don't forget, there's some uh, discount codes that are gonna be in the description. You're gonna get the Banks discount code and the Insane Diesel oil filter bypass system discount code in there as well. So we'll talk to you on the next one.